Hi, this is Sulva Ibia from Bonholm Yoga and Retreat Center in Denmark. I have John Sturk with me here on the phone, and we're going to talk a little bit about uh, John's next course when he's coming to visit us on the 20th to the 22nd of June 2014. So welcome, John. Would you tell us a bit about what we're going to be diving into this summer? I'm extremely interested as an osteopath and a yoga teacher, um, like many of us are, in the spine and how the spine has evolved and um the fact that it's um the fact that it's designed in four opposing curves you know it's shaped in a wave it is wave like in nature it's as if this wave has become frozen for one reason or another people find it very difficult to feel their spines mm. um and when they do it's a revelation <laughs> um yeah. uh, and they feel they've got into some extraordinary deep place when their spine moves So there's a poor awareness of the spine, and the spine is a very good example of our primal nature. It's 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 reptilian. You can move it by moving the pelvis and the hips, or by moving the shoulders. You can move the spine um, in conjunction with the limbs and in conjunction with the pelvis, the pelvic girdle and the shoulder girdle, or even the head. You can start waving your head around, and that will get the neck going, which will get everything lower down going. But that's kind of an imposition from the outside. And it is wonderful, but that's kind of very helpful. But that's a kind of imposition. We're, we're doing something mm. externally with an idea of moving the spine. Going even deeper than that, um, when you start getting into the breathing more deeply and start taking the mind without hardly moving, just setting it up. Yeah. Once we start to respond to gravity, the pull of the earth, and the breathing in a certain way, Um, the spine starts to move by itself. And uh, uh, strange to say that, but it actually does. And it, it's very small, it's very slight in the beginning, but it's it's the glimmer, it's a glimmer of light um, into um, our primal nature. That one upon, once upon a time, the spine did move um, in response to its environment, it seems to me. Uh, and that was before the cortex had developed. That was bef- before we knew we were responding. Mm. Um, so, uh, uh, so that's what my interest is. It's all to do with sinking beneath our conditioning and our habit, yeah. which is what yoga, the remit of yoga, basically is. Yeah. And to discover what lies beneath, basically. Um, and yoga's philosophy is that beneath the conditioning and the habit, we are relatively, at least, free from things that tend to hold us back and things that tend to keep recurring, you know, old patterns. I mean, I think they still do recur, but to a lesser level. Mm. I think that the old patterns are very hard to, um, if you like, dissolve completely. It does take a lot of work. But also, uh, some of the old patterns are not bad patterns. You know, we have positive patterns as well as, as, um, as if you like, more negative patterns. Mm. The idea of traditional and classical yoga would be to wipe the slates relatively clean, completely. So in the process of, if you like, in the process of dissolving our negative conditioning, we may also um, deal with our relationship to things like happiness and um, excitement and joy and all the rest of it. So one isn't affected by anything. Without getting too much into that, to go back primarily to how we were, that's how I see the primal self, as a self that is free from the constraints of culture and society and family and parenting and personal history, but also with the knowledge that we do have, which is also good. So we have the cortex. So I think this thing that I'm using, this focus, which is called the primal body or primal body, primal self, I mean, we're not fish. We're not We're not primitive creatures anymore. We we have evolved. We are much more sophisticated than we ever were, for better or worse, and I like to think for better. But it's how we use it. Touching um, evolutionary base, if you like, mm-hmm. um, coming back to those sensations where the body begins to um, take over yeah. from a deeper place. The spine will move with a little bit of work. It will move by itself. And because of its shape, It will move in a wave-like fashion, um, and it seems to me that this wave-like fashion, at least for moments, tends to clear 
you know, this, this, this. So one's not trying mm. to get into a meditative state. No. One's not, um, one's not applying techniques no. that put one in, into a different state of mind or a different way of being. But one is rather um, allowing oneself and inviting oneself to be taken over by physiological activity that has been there, you know, since the beginning. Mm. Um, and also we're conscious of it, you know, because of the cortex. But I'm just allowing that to take over. Um, but in the actual process of the experience, uh, it's entirely experiential. And the deeper the experience is, um, the less the mind is inclined to want to own it, you know, to want to keep it, um, which is, which is, and that's where the healing is. Mm. You know, when the mind lets go of itself for a while. But of course, obviously, there is still consciousness there. There's a different kind of consciousness there. So that's, that's where we're going with this. And we have these experiences where it's pretty, it becomes even clearer that body and mind are inseparable. So every thought, is felt by the body, you know, and every 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 um, physiological um, event is known not by the mind because not everything comes into consciousness, but at least by the brain, parts of the brain, and parts of the central nervous system. So you know, it's all fine in there. Everything's very everything's fine in there. It all knows how to get on with it. We're the problem <laughs> if there is one. But really, yoga yoga is something that, in some way, helps on an exercise level. Um, it's going to be very simple, um, but we will be using the body as the meditation and the breathing as the meditation, particularly. The breathing is as ancient as our mechanical movements, but, but I think breathing probably came a little bit later. If we subscribe to this thing of coming onto land from a watery environment over a very long time, um, you're going back and coming back and so on. We were spines moving in water. So that we came onto land, the spine had to adapt. But we're not going to try to learn how to do back bends in a certain way or how to work for our hamstrings in a certain way or how to go upside in a, upside down in a certain way. It's going to be right going right back to the beginning, treating ourselves um, as... Um, um, Organisms mm. that have been endowed um, with some kind of intelligence and that we are going to bring the intelligence and the organic nature um, together yeah. and see what comes up. I think that's probably it, really. Sounds wonderful. It's, uh, yeah, I think I'm going to start, lay down and start doing some as soon as I finish this phone <laughs> So I think I should just say the dates of the course is uh, Friday the 20th to Saturday the 22nd of June 2014. Okay. Yeah, wonderful. And uh, yeah, very much looking forward. Yeah, me too. Me too. It's such a, such a lovely um, spot you have there, the two of you, on the island. It's, it always works. The workshops are always very, um, very profound. Yeah. And also very easy, you know. Uh, uh, it's a very nice place to be able to relax and let go and uh, find those parts of ourselves or revisit those parts of ourselves that perhaps need to need to be revealed again and to have the time to do it. That's why it's so nice to do a few days. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Thank you very much, John. Thank you. Thank you very much. Lots of love. Bye-bye, okay. John. See you. Bye.